an interesting thing. And porn is a whole um, subject matter unto itself. Let's talk about the technology and the development behind planting it. Um, today, cornfields, everybody thinks that cornfields has been the same forever. Today, if you were to go to a cornfield, you could find the opening between the plants and walk one way through the field, but you wouldn't be able to turn left or right. You'd be forced to stay in that particular road till you got out to the end. In the 19th century, and really up until the 1930s, corn was planted in what's called check rows, which meant mm -hmm. you would, you would uh, divide the field, and sometimes there were machines that would do that for you, but you would have to um, um, plant in squares of about 36 to sometimes 40 inches apart. So you would have plants that would come up in isolation of each other with enough room to be able to go up east-west, north-south in the field with the horse and cultivator because um, the whole concept of herbicides did not exist. So weed control was done with a hoe in your hand, and in some cases early before the crop was too, too old, with horse-drawn implements. So, in the 19th century, and you read about these civil war battles that were fought through cornfields, you know, that's why they could do that, is because you could move up and down the rows, left and right, and front and back. Um, and typically, most farms would plant other things with the corn, like pumpkins and things like that, all ending up as uh, typically uh, cattle fodder in the end. So the corn would be harvested, typically by hand. Um, the, the fodder itself, or the stalks, would be cut, either before the corn was picked or just after, and made into the corn shoots. You've probably all seen that in romantic pictures of the past, and some, some Amish communities still do it that way, where these triangular teepee shaped things are set across the field. Mm -hmm. What happens is the outside of the corn will stay brown and sort of exposed to the sun, but the inside stays green and ret uh, retains a lot of nutrients, and that could be fed later to the cattle. Because until, again, the 1920s and 30s, the whole concept of silage and silos and things like that was not typical on American farm. So, um, fodder, if you will, was cut up from the corn stalks and things like that throughout the course of the winter, and the pumpkins and different things also were grown and chopped up for the cattle and the hogs and things like that. So, corn was one thing that took forever to get mechanized, and really it's not fully mechanically mechanized in this country in many cases until the 1920s and 30s with the uh, advent of <clears throat> machines that were either horse-drawn or, or uh, um, tractor-drawn. We'll see some of those machines over here in a bit. Um, in this area are a couple other examples of things. Uh, tractors are always an interesting story, and it's uh, one that comes on pretty late, and Henry Ford had a huge hand in uh, converting the American farm to the tractor as well with his forts and, and his early tractors, which essentially became the Model Ts of the fields. Um, they were readily available to the farmers and uh, um, made that transition through the 19-teens and 20s when people sort of got away from horses and began working with tractors. Um, there were other competitors in the field, a lot of things that sort of, you know, a lot of different things were optional. There was, uh, steam power was, an, uh, was a thing that was very common for a while following the Civil War. Um, and we've got some examples of these uh, uh, in this particular area right here. So when we go down to the end here, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the harvesting stuff that we've got. <laughs>